This is Ryan Reagan, the founding partner of HTXM. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you how to get a level 7 in IB chemistry. I used to be an IB student and I got a very high 7 for my IB chemistry before. So I'm going to share with you today exactly how I revised for IB chemistry. So you follow the steps I'm sharing with you in this video. I'm very confident that you too get good at level 7 in IB chemistry, right? Because the, the strategy is proven. I've tried it for myself and it worked, okay? So without further ado, let's get straight to it. If you want to get a level 7 in IB chemistry, stay tuned. Okay, now, so how did I study for IB chemistry? So, uh, so first, before I go into this, I'm going to tell you, in the first year of my IB, actually, I did, I did it on my own. And then in the second year of IB, I got a tutor because I felt that I didn't have enough time. There were so many IB subjects I had to focus on. So I, tr I decided to get a tutor to make my learning more efficient, basically. Right? So, and uh, I would... For IB chemistry, it, I would definitely recommend getting a tutor for the subject. The reason is because a tutor can really save a lot of your time, right? Uh, so because there are six subjects in IB, if you want to do well, you need to you need to do very well in all the subjects, right? So um, and each subject requires a lot of time. And if you have a tutor, you can save your time dramatically. I would say a tu the tutor that I had for chemistry saved about. 60 to 70 percent of my time right so before i might need to use 100 hours now only 30 to 40 hours it the tutor really helped that much but nonetheless the met the, the steps i followed is the same so the first step i did was that I, for every chapter, so 20 chapters in chemistry right for hl and 10 for sl so what I did was that I, for each chapter, I would first try to understand the concepts, okay? I would actually go sub-chapter by sub-chapter. So I would first study 1.1, and then 1.2, 1.3, and so on. And for each sub-chapter, the first step is I, I would try to get an understanding of the concepts. So I would do that by, from the tutor, if I, if I was at a tutoring place, I would, the tutor would explain it to me. Or if, when I didn't have a tutor, I would try to read different textbooks, okay? It's important to read different textbooks because it will give you a more comprehensive understanding. If you can't understand one textbook, you can go to another textbook, right? So first, after I feel like I understand concepts, I would find a whole bunch of exam questions, either online or from textbooks. When I had a tutor, the tutor will sort those questions for me so I can save a lot of time. I don't need to find questions on my own, right? So I attempt the questions. So the first time I attempt the questions, I don't really do it in exam conditions. I just want to try if I can solve the questions. And I can, through this process, I can sort of find knowledge gaps. So I can find out like which parts, uh, which concepts I don't understand it, and I can attempt the questions again, right? So doing the questions the first time kind of tells me like what I don't understand. And I can, through this process, I can understand the topic, right? When I had a tutor, obviously this was a lot faster because the tutor would give me the right questions to try and then I would try them and he would he would immediately observe what I didn't know and it, it really saved a lot of my time. So now well another thing is that when you try exam questions it's important for you not only to do paper one because paper one is MCQ. So normally I would do the MCQ questions. Once I master all the MCQ questions it just means that I know the fundamental concepts already because normally the MCQs are more basic, right? But then that doesn't mean I've mastered the topic. So after I do the paper one questions, I try paper two questions because paper two questions are often more in depth, right? But definitely try paper one questions first because paper one questions are more basic than once you master them, you can see paper two if you have mastered them, right? So it's kind of like a self-testing process. You first try to read the concepts, understand it, then try questions to find out where your knowledge gaps are. And then you try to fill those knowledge gaps and try questions again. So keep trying questions until you feel like you have really understood the entire topic where you can solve literally every single question. So for IB chemistry, there are some skills that you need to need to acquire, okay? Not, not necessarily chemistry skills, but like uh, academic skills. So the first skill is interpreting charts because in IB chemistry, especially in paper two, sometimes even paper one, a lot of times you need to be able to interpret charts and describe the movements in a chart. So for example, if a curve is like exponentially going up, like an exponential curve, you need to describe it by saying something like it is increasing at an increasing rate. So these terms like this, right? It is very important for you to interpret graphs well in paper two and paper one. Okay, and you can do this by practicing with exam questions, okay, and getting a tutor as well, right? And this takes practice. The second one is mental math, because in paper one, MCQ questions, you're actually not allowed to use a calculator, right? So mental math is very important, but like ultimately it's just addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. It's not that difficult for chemistry. But the difficult part is that 
the time is limited, right? So you have like around one minute for each MCQ. So if your mental math suck, then you're basically going to lag behind. You're, you're going to do poorly in paper one because you have to be able to do mental math fast. Okay, it needs to be fast. So this actually, when I was an IB student, I really practiced my, I, my mental math before the final exam, like a month before the final exam. I kept doing paper one and I do it in exam condition. Okay, mental math, being able to do mental math is not good enough. You need to be able to do mental math fast enough. So you need to time yourself to see if you can, if you can do your mental math fast enough. And this takes practice. The next thing is answering skills. So because in paper two, you get short questions, like sometimes it's two marks or it can be up to eight marks. The key here is that you need to be able to, uh, because some, some students, they understand the concept, but they can't answer questions well. So the biggest tip I have is that first you need to identify what the question is really asking. You need to, that takes practice. So you, with more practice, you can more easily identify what the question is asking. You know what the question is asking. Then the next thing is you need to write as many points as the, as the marks that the question is worth. So for example, if the question is worth six marks, you should at least write six points, okay? Six different arguments, okay? So if it's a three mark question, you write three arguments, okay? That's, I guess, the biggest tip I have. Uh, other than that, you really need, need to do more practice and guidance from a tutor will help you for, these, for each topic, right? So, so as I just not mentioned a tutor who really helped me a lot. So at issue Excel, we can arrange tutors for you if you want to dramatically increase your studying efficiency. So as I said, it will shorten your time in all stages. So to understand concepts, it will take less time because our tutor, because to, let's be honest, in textbooks, there is a lot of irrelevant information. There's a lot of information that you don't really need to know, but it's in the textbook, right? Our tutor can skip through all of that, okay? So that saves you time, number one. They will tell you what you need to know and what you don't need to know. The second part is that um, a lot of times when you read textbook, it, maybe you need to read it a few times before you really get it because reading words like it's it's not often not explained in the simplest manner possible. But with a tutor, um, our tutors are trained to explain things in a very simplified manner. So it will shorten your time to understand the questions. Then the next step is you need to find exam questions, right? If you can find it on your own, it can take hours. But at our center, we already have IB chemistry question banks. So it's already all sorted by topic. It's all the question types you need to know. So you don't need to find your own questions. That saves a lot of time as well. Then the last part is uh, practicing exam questions. Our tutors will help will teach you how to solve the most common exam question types. So after the lesson, you already know how to solve the most common exam question types. The next step you need to do is just, uh, just to practice, right? So dramatically reduce your time on attempting exam questions because our tutor will teach you how to do it. But if you try on your own, it will take a lot more of your time, right? Um, yeah, so this is it for this video. I hope you find this video useful. Also, we have some free resources that we're giving out. So we're giving out our IB chemistry question bank. So you can download in the link in the description. Okay, it's all in the description. You can download our IB chemistry question bank. Those will help you to revise. Okay, so I hope you find this video useful and see you next time.